Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I want to talk to you about the classic science fiction novel The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. So I'm going to start by telling you John Wyndham's full name just because it amused me. So he had six names. So his full name was um, John Wyndham Parks Lucas Bain and Harris, um, which is a very long name and a very English sounding name as well. Um, and appropriate because The Midwich Cuckoos is, I think, a very English feeling book. Um, so Wyndham is, um, you know, I think probably less well known now than he used to be, but certainly in the 50s and 60s was a very well known British science fiction writer and wrote the kind of science fiction that was quite accessible to people, I think, because it wasn't about spaceships and robots and stuff like that. It was about ordinary people experiencing extraordinary things. Um, so he wrote and published seven science fiction novels under the name John Wyndham in his lifetime. There were other books he wrote under pseudonyms um, and some, some other books of his were published posthumously as well. But of the seven books he published in his lifetime, I think the two that are most remembered and, and most kind of embedded in the in the public consciousness um, are this one, The Midwich Cuckoos um, and The Day of the Triffids. And I think the reason those two books have, have lasted so much is, is partly because they were both made into movies um, and TV shows indeed. In fact, The Midwich Cuckoos has very recently been, been um, televised again. Um, but also because they just have concepts at the heart of them which are immediately intriguing and, and understandable by people. So um, the Day of the Triffids obviously is about um, plants attacking humans um, and the Midwich Cuckoos is about the, you know this group of strange children with, with weird powers. Um, so before, um, before becoming a writer, um, Wyndham had worked um, for the British government. And I think this is quite interesting and, and probably plays a bit into this book. So he worked um, for the Ministry of Information during the Second World War um, as a censor. Um, and I could definitely feel that, um, that, that experience um, rubbing off on, on some of the events in this book. So let me tell you what the book's about. So it is set in a small English uh, village called Midwich, where this, this weird event has happened for, for the period of a day. Um, and nobody can explain it. But what happens thereafter is all of the women that were in the village at the time of this event become pregnant um, and eventually deliver children. And, and those children become the Midwich cuckoos. The cuckoo obviously being a bird that lays its, lays its eggs in other birds' nests. So there's this mystery at the, at the heart of the book about, you know, why did these women become pregnant? And, and indeed, what did they become pregnant with? Um, the, the narrator of the book, um, who's someone who lives in Midwich and his wife were out of the village at the time of this event. Um, and that's quite an interesting technique because it allows Wyndham to, to have someone who is both an insider and an outsider commenting on the events that happen. Um, all of the book is, you know, is written through the, the, the main character's perspective. But because he and his wife haven't been directly impacted by these events, he's he's got more, slightly more of a distanced view. Um, and it did occur to me reading it that that felt like, in some ways, it's an interesting and an effective way of telling the story. But it does make the story less emotional than it might have been otherwise. And I think this is a story that if it had been written today, would would probably have been written from a female perspective, because it's you know it's the women of Midwich who in the first half of the book anyway are the ones that really feel the impact of of what's happening because that you know they become inexplicably pregnant and that kind of fear of, of violation of your body being used for something you you haven't asked for it to be used for is I think something quite interesting that isn't really explored very much in the book um as the story progresses, and this isn't really a spoiler, I don't think, you know, the, the women have the children and the children grow up to be these, you know, these strange figures that we um, are familiar with from, you know, posters for the movies and things like that. So they have kind of strange eyes and things like that. Um, and they have these these weird powers. Um, but that is very much in, in the second half of the book. It, and it's only really in the last third or so of the book that the, the, the characters of the children really start coming out. Um, so it's a book that you know explores an, an intriguing central concept 
and does it in quite an interesting way. But it does feel, and it did feel to me, quite dated. So it definitely feels like a book from the 50s. And it definitely feels like an English book. So the characters are all kind of terribly polite to each other. Um, they drink lots of tea. Um, and they they feel like they are kind of controlling their emotions about things. Nobody gets too um, kind of heated about things in this book, really. Um, but it is a, it's, it's an interesting concept, and it, and it feels like it's very much, the, the subtext here feels very much like it's about, um, you know, the, the state of the world and the state of England at the time that the book was written. So I think it came out in 57, so not that long after the end of the Second World War, and also at a time when, you know, the Soviet Union was, you know, had suddenly become this big new threat to um, to the West. Um, but also for, for Great Britain at a time when there was suddenly a lot of um, immigration into the country um, from other parts of the, of the Commonwealth. Um, and this very much feels like an examination of that, like a book about immigration and how society um, should deal with immigrants. Um, and it feels, uh, you know, it feels very dated in its views because of that. So that that subtext just slaps you in the face. And more and more as the book goes on, it becomes apparent that, that that's what Wyndham is trying to be, uh, you know, is trying to write about. And, it, and he does do it in a, in a reasonably nuanced way. Um, and it is, you know, it's an interesting book and it's it's quite a gripping book because even though the kind of broad strokes of the, of the story are familiar, um, you know, there's enough in there that you don't necessarily know to keep you reading. And there are some, you know, some particular events which are really gripping and, and interesting to read. Um, but yeah, it did feel very, very dated. And, you know, the view of the characters to um, to other parts of the world um, is is definitely of its time, shall we say? Um, so yeah, it's a, it's an interesting book. It's quite a uh, it's quite a gripping and exciting book, but also one that definitely feels like it was written fifty years ago, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. And it makes it an interesting book to read if you want to, you know, kind of understand British views of the world at that time. Um, but it did, you know, to me as a as a modern reader, make it feel quite dated. Okay, time for a random book from the shelves. Today's book is My Absolute Darling by Gabriel Talent, which is another book about um, kind of terrible, inexplicable things happening to female characters, but written by a man. But I think Talent does a much better job um, of, um, you know, of, of giving the female perspective on things. So this is a, a very disturbing book about abuse, um, but also about revenge. Um, which I thought was was really excellent, really gripping, really moving, um, definitely worth reading. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know what you think about John Wyndham as a writer if you've read him. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.